Now this is a continuation video to the fat soluble vitamins. So we had tackled A, E and K, the three vitamins. So we were remaining with vitamin D and uh, vitamin D was a little deep. So we had to hold it for this video. So again, welcome. And I hope you get to understand this one too. Thank you so much for the support. Keep subscribing. We are on our way to 10,000 subscribers. So kindly, if you have not subscribed, press that subscription button. And again, press that bell so that anytime we put up these videos, you'll be among the first people to be notified. So, vitamin D. Now, I once mentioned vitamin D and I said vitamin D or the sun does not cause cancer. And I also said that uh, the sun is the source of vitamin D. Yes, why? Because the vitamin D that we already have in our skin is not active. And therefore, the first step in synthesis of vitamin D from the cholesterol that is in our skin has to be exposure to UV radiation. Now, UV radiation will come from the sun. Remember, your skin is made up of layers and there's a layer that has fat. And that fat is cholesterol. And cholesterol that is in the skin that is supposed to help you form vitamin D is called 7-dehydrocholesterol. 7-dehydrocholesterol. And this is in the skin. Now, this 7-dehydrocholesterol will only be activated when you have exposure to UV radiation. So UV, which is ultraviolet radiation from the sun, activates this 7-dehydrocholesterol in your skin to form vitamin D3. Okay? So UV exposure to uh, exposure of 7-dehydrocholesterol de, de, to UV will yield vitamin D3. And the name for vitamin D3 is Cole calciferol. Okay? So we have 7 dehydrocholesterol being exposed to UV. And then you get seven, you get cholecalcitrol, which is vitamin D3. Now, this vitamin D3 gets access to your bloodstream. Now, in the blood, cholecalciferol is carried all the way to the liver. Okay? So it finds its way to the liver because from the bloodstream, everything that is in the blood has to go through the liver. So this goes to, to the liver. And in the liver, it encounters an enzyme that will make it even more or towards, will head, uh, make substrate that will keep on uh, being developed to give you vitamin D, the active form. Now, in the liver, it will encounter an enzyme that is called 25-hydroxylase. This enzyme converts vitamin D3 to a certain uh, 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 vitamin D3, which is called 25. Remember, this enzyme is hydroxy. So it adds hydroxide groups to carbon number 25 of vitamin D3. Okay. So once it adds that, then it becomes 25 hydroxy, because you're adding a hydroxy group, cole calciferol okay so we've added hydroxy group at hydroxy groups are the OH groups so we've added this at position at carbon number 25 of vitamin D3 to form 25 hydroxy calciferol now this compound then is then now uh, heads to the kidneys where it encounters another enzyme that will activate it more to the uh, active form of vitamin D. So, this one goes to the kidneys, and in the kidneys, it gets an enzyme that is called 1-alpha-hydroxylase. Okay? So, in the kidneys, now it finds 1-alpha-hydroxylase. Now, this 1-alpha-hydroxylase converts this 25 hydroxycholecalciferol to its active form, which is calci 
trial. So calcitriol, this is the active form of vitamin D. And this, cal calci uh, this is calcitriol has a chemical name that is, remember we've added hydroxy at carbon 1, then another one at carbon 25. So it will be 1, 25, dye, because there are two, hydroxy, then you add the name cholecalciferol. So that will be 125 dihydroxy, two hydroxy uh, groups, then cole, then calciferol. Okay, do not worry so much about the, uh, the, the chemical names of this. Just understand that the active form of vitamin D is calcitriol, this one. Now this calcitriol has to be activated through UV radiation. So one, you have cholesterol in the skin, which has to be activated to start. Uh, so this is step one. So the cholesterol in your skin or the fat in your skin has to be activated to a form that will help you synthesize active vitamin D. And that cholesterol is then converted in the liver and final activation is in the kidneys to form vitamin D, the active form, which is calcitriol. Now, that is the synthesis of vitamin D. So now you understand why I, why, why I always say the, the source of vitamin D has to be the sun because without UV radiation, then you will never form active vitamin D and therefore you will experience deficiencies of vitamin D. Now, I will talk about deficiencies of vitamin D so that you get to understand once you, when, when you don't walk in the sun and get this activation of this uh, steroid or this vitamin D, then what will happen? Okay, so number two. We'll go to the functions of vitamin D. What are the functions of vitamin D? Now, vitamin D, the active vitamin D, has a role uh, uh, in your blood. Which role? It converts, okay, it causes calcium resorption from the bone. So there's, there's calcium that moves from the bone into the blood. Also, it causes a reabsorption of calcium and phosphates from uh, the kidneys. So, two very important components, calcium and phosphate. So these two, vitamin D will cause absorption of this from the intestines or the GIT. It also causes reabsorption from the kidneys so that it don't, it doesn't, uh, they are not excreted through urine. And again, it will cause uh, uh, the, the calcium and phosphorus from, to come from the bone into the blood so that you have high content of calcium and phosphorus in the blood. Now, remember vitamin D is used to, uh, uh, most of us know, it, it helps you to prevent uh, rickets in babies. Now, and again we are saying it breaks the bone to give you calcium in blood. However, remember, when it breaks the bone, it gives you calcium. Now, this calcium in blood will combine with this phosphorus. They love being together. So these two will combine to form a complex. And this complex will precipitate back into the bones and that will strengthen your bones. That will help your children uh, not to get the rickets. So, uh, our thoughts are that we are breaking the bone to bring calcium into the bloodstream and this will weaken the bone. However, that is the inverse. Once calcium comes into the bloodstream, then it activates uh, the parathyroid gland and therefore this calcium combines with phosphate and these two will precipitate into the bones and will then make the bones stronger. So that is the concept. Now, those are the functions of vitamin, vitamin D basically. Now I want you to understand Vitamin D can be sourced from diet also, but very minimal amounts of uh, vitamin D are present in diets. And in diet, we have the animal and the plants. So sources are plants and animal predominantly. Now in animal, we get the seafoods and the liver. They have high content uh, of vitamin D. However, it's not enough to satisfy uh, this channel or to satisfy your body demands for vitamin D. So vitamin D that comes from animals is actually consumed as vitamin D3. And remember, vitamin D3 is the one that goes into the bloodstream. Therefore, if you consume diets, the vitamin D that you get into the, from the diet, which is animal source, will go straight into the bloodstream and go through the same channel to the liver and then to the kidneys for activation. Okay? However, the vitamin D that you get from the plant sources is vitamin D2. So vitamin D2 from the uh, plant sources has to be activated to vitamin D3, then goes into the bloodstream and also follows the same channel. Okay, so that's the difference between plant and animal sources of vitamin D. 
Okay. Good. Now, so that is for uh, plants and and animal sources. Now, deficiency of vitamin D. What will happen if you're told you have lower amounts of vitamin D in your system? Now, I want you to understand that low amounts of vitamin D will expose you to two things. Number one, if there are children whose bones have not developed and, uh, and uh, they're still uh, uh, calcifying to form strong bones, that will mean they will get into bendy bones. The bones will start bending. And this is where rickets come in. Okay, so for children, it will cause bending of bones, which is rickets. For adults, it will cause brittle bones. So children will have bendy bones, which are rickets, and adults, since you've already developed and your bones are strong now, you cannot have bending bones. You will only have brittle bones, so it'll be easy, they'll be easy to fracture and stuff like that because of deficiency of vitamin D. Also remember, vitamin D Apart from it coming from diet and uh, activation from the sun, you uh, you have uh, it varies according to the skin tone. So people who have a light skin uh, will have to produce or synthesize five times the amount of vitamin D, okay, than people who have a dark tone of skin. And also it will also depend with uh, where you are, if there's an exposure to sunlight or not. So there are so many factors that are considered when trying to uh, analyze the amount of vitamin D in the system. So basically those are the, the deficiencies. And now, so this one is gone. The last one is excess. So vitamin D poisoning is one of the most dangerous poisonings. Why? Your heart depends on calcium, okay, to contract and pump uh, blood. Your blood vessels also contract and expand because of calcium. Your nerve cells are reliant on calcium for transmission, okay? So if you have a high content of vitamin D, which will bring uh, calcium, high amount of calcium in your bloodstream, that will mean there will be a problem with these organs and these uh, cells. Now, remember, 50% of the world's population suffers from vitamin D deficiency without knowing. So that is part of the deficiency, just in case we, uh, there's a point under the deficiency. 50% of the world population suffers from vitamin D deficiency. That's a very large amount of, uh, uh, very large amount of uh, the population. So it's, it's a risk, but that falls under deficiency. Under excess, if you have excess vitamin D, I already mentioned the organs or the cells that will be affected. And therefore, number one, the organ I want to be affected will be the kidney. So this is weird because the kidney activates vitamin D. Okay, and then vitamin D activates the absorption of calcium and phosphorus from the kidneys so it raises the amount of calcium in blood now this calcium will come again and affect the same kidneys why because this is where we get the calcium related kidney stones so calcium related kidney stones come from the high amounts of calcium that uh, uh, from high amount of uh, uh, vitamin D that has been activated in the kidneys. So it's quite uh, ironical. However, that is what happens in kidney stones. And again, in the bones, you will have osteomalacia, which means you'll have brittle bones and stuff. Because remember again, there's sourcing calcium from the bones into the blood before uh, it combines with phosphorus and then goes back to the bone. So you'll have brittle bones and osteomalacia. And this happens mostly in also women who are on contraceptives and women who are past their menopause. Okay, so that is very dangerous to your bones. Then muscle contraction. We already said the heart contracts and relaxes and those muscles require calcium to contract and relax. And that's why when you have heart problem or high blood pressure, there are drugs that are called calcium channel blockers, CCBs. And one of them is nifedipine, the most common one, nifedipine. This is a drug that is supposed to close the channels that calcium gets into the cells so that it doesn't get in and therefore reduces the contraction of the heart. So that's why it's a calcium channel block. It blocks those channels so that calcium does not get into the cells and therefore no contractions, okay? So the heart will have a problem because high amount of calcium will cause super contraction. So you'll have a condition called arrhythmias and all this. And it might contract and uh, until it gets worn out and that is a problem for you. So high content of vitamin D are very dangerous to your, to your uh, heart. Again, 
to nerve cells. It will cause depression of the nerve cells and low nervous transmission. And that is a condition that we don't want to suffer from. So basically that is the vitamin D. And that summarizes our fat soluble vitamins which are A, D, E and K. So we basically talked about vitamin A, E, K. Now we finished with vitamin D. The processes, the sources, uh, the deficiency conditions. And basically for vitamin D we've added the excess of it.